Well, um, now for the final ascendant, which is Pisces ascendant, uh, who actually have their 12th Lord Rahu transiting through their 4th house and 5th uh, house. And Jupiter itself is uh, transiting through their 9th house. So, uh, you know, definitely for uh, the Pisces ascendant, they have been uh, dealing with, uh, you know, some kind of creativity or some kind of unexpected children and all of these themes happening, you know. And, Jupiter is aspecting their Lagna, which is kind of giving them grace and protection of their Guru uh, for them. But now Rahu transiting over their fourth house, suddenly there is more needs of their family that is having to be met. You know, they are having to be there for their family, which which is kind of uh, scary for them in one way or the other. But then suddenly being there for them is actually helping them out, uh, finding inspiration, uh, unexpected inspiration from out of nowhere literally you know and the Pisces as in a native are going to make huge gains in real estate one in one way or the other uh, that can be a big time for them uh, the other thing with uh, Pisces is that uh, 12th Lord Rahu is a transiting through the fourth house so perhaps you know if you were trying to get rid of some properties this might be a time period when you might actually get rid of the property you know that can also happen so it could be not just property it could also be the car which you have been trying to sell or you know trying to get a better car stuff like that that can also happen here um, one definite thing with pisces ascendant is that uh rahu in fourth house uh, is going to trigger some deep uh, deep investigation about what is actually making you comfortable um is and uh, to kind of forcing you to deal with your own home situations or family situations or literally your own space what what exactly would you define as your own space and are you creating a comfort space which is literally not challenging you anymore? You know, that kind of themes can actually be brought out for a Pisces Ascendant. Yeah, for Pisces Ascendant and for Pisces Moon, I feel, you know, they might have they might have a great need to want to own a house near an ocean or near on a mountain or something. Some desire that might have been there with them for a long period of time, they might want to uh, when you say a mountain, it, in, in today's times, people live in cities. You might be looking at a skyscraper where you want to live, you know, on maybe the, the 70th floor or the you know the 50th floor or something like that. So, or uh, living by a river or a ocean. This this might be something that they want to look at. Also, there might be some deep rooted insecurities that will fill up, and they might be able to sleep better. They might suddenly feel that their uh, sleep patterns have become much more deeper um, so those are some of the themes that i would say for pisces ascendant will definitely play out for those people who have children children will give them a little bit of a worry that might be a cause of concern because of children and also what i feel is communication should be something that they need to be wary about um, but uh, these are people i think this is good times for uh, pisces ascendant or a pisces moon Okay, great. Um, seems like we have a lot of ascendance now. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, hopefully, um, w w any quick uh, notes on remedies, Dr. Pai? Uh, I know this is the Pisces ascendant and media, but yeah. any quick notes on remedies? Yeah, for, for Rahu, I think, you know, one of the, the key things that I've said is uh, wanting to learn a new uh, language or maybe even writing mantras in a language that you have not known of. So what you can do is uh, what works well, uh, especially for Rahu, is to have um, something that you always wished for, that imagine you wanted to wish for something. Punarvas was a great nakshatra to wish for. So whenever uh, Rahu is going to transit, it's always good to keep, um, you know, short, you know, um, what do you call those? You can keep cards or things you can write your wish write your wish and put it in a basket and you know whenever you feel like you should just go you know all your wishes should go to a basket you can have colorful uh, you know uh, posted cards where you can write your wish in a language that uh, might you know you might not be aware of or you might want to also try to write if you're right-handed try to write with your left hand if you want to draw something try to do it with the opposite hand so if you're right-handed then i would say use your left hand to do some uh, you know art art work or something that might be helpful but this thing i've always seen which is very very helpful is every day i had a friend of mine who used to uh, write their uh, aspirations and desires on a piece of chit and based on the color of the day 
So if it was Monday, you know, um, she used to take a white sheet of paper, write her wish, and then she used to fold it up and put it into a small basket. Okay, like uh, a bamboo basket or something. You can get a bamboo, uh, you know, a basket, small one, because bamboo is associated with Punarvasu. So you can write your wish and put it there. And then, you know, whenever you want to, you can just go from the whole box and you can remove one wish and then meditate on that wish. So that might be a good way to, you know, activate the Punarvasu. Punarvasu is going back again, which means you have this bamboo basket where you have all, all got these wishes being kept. So, you know, on a special day, whenever Rahu Kal is operating, it might be a good idea to go in that from the wish basket to remove a wish, look at that wish, and then to meditate in the Rahu Kal and put the, uh, the chit back into the... So if it is Tuesday, you would want to put a red chit, you know, Wednesday, green, you know, and so on and so forth, the different colors of the day. And you can mix it up and then you can pick up a wish and Rahu Kal would be a good time to actually meditate on those wish. So you can have a wish which is maybe, a, you know, like a small, so a short term, which is three months, then six months or 12 months, or, the, or maybe, you know, after two years, what do you want to achieve in life? But I think Rahu and Punarvasu is a great time to activate these sort of uh, wishes. Uh, one, one thing, a couple of things I'll add is like uh, definitely chanting the mantra Om in a repeated fashion. Yeah. Having Om in the background or listening to Om or chanting Om. A lot is great for Purnavasana Nakshatra Nitam because that it's Purnavasana Nakshatra is connected with Mother Atiti, who is like the Om Mantra, who is um, added in in front of all other mantras, you know, who is giving the power for all other mantras. Um, definitely, I would say that if you have read an old inspiring book or an old uh, spiritual book which you which you felt you were inspired by um, maybe five years ago, this might be a good time to reconnect with those. You suddenly you are finding that is actually helping you out. Perhaps 10 years ago you were inspired by a, by a reading some Yogananda's book, say for instance, or you know some other guru's book. Now you pick the, pick the same book up right now and you are reading through it. Now suddenly you are finding greater inspiration. You know that can actually happen. Uh, this might be a great time to connect with your school teachers or you know people whom you consider as your gurus and reconnecting with them and kind of simply expressing your gratitude for them for. Uh, Helping you reach where you are, I will, that would definitely bring about the grace of Jupiter in a big way. Uh, definitely, any kind of service towards Guru, definitely that's that's default. Not definitely going to help out a lot, no matter what uh, can happen. Especially the primary school teachers or the school teachers whom you know literally brought you up. You know that's what I would say. Um, what one great thing is also to reconnect with uh, very old temples which you used to visit to. That's also the other thing which I can definitely recommend. Dr. Pai mentioned Naga temples. That's also great. Uh, definitely the one of the best things things to do is like um, Rahu, any kind of Rahu kind of temple which has got a Durga temple or you know uh, Vishnu temples or Krishna temples. All these kind of temples are great. Definitely, uh, but reconnecting with the old temples which you visited to, you know, and suddenly you're finding newer inspiration, uh, you know, newer uh, things to work on really. Mm. Also what I was thinking is uh, this might be a good time to visit a specific temple called as a um, Ananta Padmanabha temple because that's connected to a lot of prosperity and wealth and also you know Punarvasu it's like Rahu when it's moving there it's all of that uh, wealth because again Ananta Padmanabha temple is a, a specific to the you know uh, Vishnu lying on the Ananta Shesha so that's again the serpent the head of the serpent so that might be a, you know something that might be also, what I would say for this Rahu transit, um, reading specific chapters of uh, Ramayana might also be very, very helpful yes. because Punarvasu yes. is associated with Lord Sri Ram and his birth. And, you know, so uh, the Yuddha Khanda or whatever they call it, uh, Kishkinda Khanda, when they're going, looking, that might be certain things, Sundar Khand. These might be specific chapters that might be recommended in certain scriptures and reading them might really bring in the benefit of Rahu. Yeah. On that note, you know, um, just watch out for the repetitive thoughts that are going through your mind. You know, Purnavasu natives have this tendency of repetitive thoughts. So just watch out for that. Don't and be be uh, just see it in beautiful and much better, uh, healthier thoughts rather than the negative thoughts that are actually pulling you down, which definitely will play out for Purnavasu natives for sure. 
okay so that was it uh, on the remedies but so thank you very much everybody for uh, joining us you can also go to our um, app which is cosmic insights you can you'll have a lot of uh, insights there on the upcoming transits what are the the festivals the rituals that you can follow on a day-to-day -day basis you can go to our blog as well and uh, there's a lot of information there and also we'll be coming up with a, a few posts on uh, you know these remedies that we talked about for you know whenever rahu is going to transit into punar vasu you know what are those remedies that you can specifically do so watch out for that uh, article to come up on our uh, blog cosmic insights and please download our app you will also be able to see you know whenever key transits are happening uh, you know when would certain planets be in their gandanta or you can also look at uh, you know uh, certain key transits when they are going to re retrograde when they are stationary so all these you know features are available in the cosmic insights app so please don't forget to download the app also for those people who are not very aligned to uh, you know the advanced level of uh, jyotisha you can also download our align 27 app which gives you a daily update on what are those things and how those transits every day can impact you and your lives so definitely that would be much easier for those people to understand also the key uh, timings when they need to do uh, key decisions so all that's also embedded into the align 27 app so please go for you know look uh, go ahead and download these apps and you'll see the benefit of using these transits uh, through this app. So thank you everybody. Okay, great. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste.